News, a quack doctor practicing at Covenant Clinic at Medina in Accra has been re-arrested. Arimayao Adams is among the 19 quack doctors arrested and ordered by the Medical and Dental Council to stop operating. Covenant Clinic is one of the facilities that uh, was closed down somewhere last year. Uh, this place, I'm told, was barricaded so that uh, the facility would not function or would not operate. Uh, but uh, we are here today and the place is functioning. Together with the investigator from the Ghana Medical and Dental Council, the news team barged into the quack doctor's consulting room. We are following up on the story and we have been told that this facility has been closed down only for us to come here and the place is working. We just want to know, Alaji. We just want to know. How long has this place been on? Alaji, how long has this place been on? Put it off. Alaji, put it off. 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 So what do you want to talk to him about? Alaji, if you have anything, let's say it here. Oh, no, 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 no. no, I won't talk to you in private, Alaji. If you have anything, let's, you have my number, right? Yeah. I do call you, you have my number. So if I had not come here today, Alaji, if I had not been here today, would I even come no, to know I'm my phone, that's why. It doesn't I'll matter. When was, the, when was the last time you came to court? I said my phone was totally... It doesn't totally matter. When was the last time you came to court? You forget about it. We don't discuss about that later. Which one? No, me, I'm only doing my work. I have finished my work, so there is no need. Some patients had obviously come there to seek medical care. The two certificates hanging in the consulting room certifies his facility has passed the environmental health and sanitation. Arime Yao has been operating for the past 20 years here as a medical doctor. <laughs> The records book here show the facility is highly patronized. But the wards were in poor shape and the pharmacy messy. He operated a laboratory. The investigator reported the case to the Medina police for his rearrest. He is currently in the custody of the regional CID headquarters. Now, you would all admit that the issue of fake doctors is certainly a very worrying one because it has to do with human lives, in fact. And we hope that the introduction of stamps by the Medical and Dental Council in early 2018, January 2018, will see this issue curbed. But I'm going to run you by the regional breakdown of arrested fake doctors. Investigations by the Medical and Dental Council have led to the arrest of 20 quack doctors across the country since January 2016. And to some, this figure may seem quite small in as much as how serious this case is, but you would know that one doctor would obviously, obviously not be visited by one patient. Many patients are going to be visiting the hospital, and that's what makes it particularly worrying. Now, in the greater Accra region alone, 12 quack doctors, Volta region 2, Eastern region 2, and the Bono Ahafo region 1, and the Central region 3. Now, as I said earlier, the, the stamps that are going to be introduced in 2013, as well as tags to be worn by these doctors so that persons who visit these hospitals shall be able, be able to identify those that they are not particularly, those services they are not particularly pleased with should certainly help. But, Alfred, it's, it's a big concern because this, these are people's lives at stake. True. And I mean, I, I'm here, and if I decide to go to the hospital or clinic, what do I really look out for? And uh, innocently, Ghanaians watching out there, would have to know something. Uh, the registrar of the Medical and Dental Council, fortunately, is with us in studio, Dr. Eli Kwesi Atikpui. Doc, good evening to you. Thank you very much for joining us. Good evening. How come that Aremiao, who was arrested some time ago, was released and went into practice and has been doing this for 20 years, treating innocent Ghanaians or whatever precautions has been given to them? Um, I would only talk about the time of his arrest and his re-arrest. He was arrested the first time in May 2016. And uh, as to how long he had practiced, I think we needed to have gotten that from the place. Yeah, you know, what really happens is that anybody that holds himself up and practices as a doctor without recourse to the law uh, is a criminal offense. Mm -hmm. And it is spelled out in the... Health Professions Regulatory Bodies Act 2013 at 857, 
which makes it a criminal case. So what happens is that we, in collaboration with the police, do the arrest and we hand over the individual to the police for them to continue with their investigations and then they are ring before the person before court for the court to take the decision. You know, so we really do not do the prosecution. It is the police and then the court that really uh, do that. I see, what I'm worried about is that this person was first arrested in May 2016 yeah. and you denounced him, I would assume. He was able to get back into practice yeah, and you was see, arrested again. Yeah, I will tell you and what that's happened. That's where the concern yeah, is. I will tell you what happened. Apparently, this individual was arrested. He was investigated. He was charged and arraigned before court. Uh, my team went to court a couple of times. I think about four times. And then somewhere along the line, I was informed that a gentleman had ceased coming to court and was submitting some excuse duties. It was only today that I learned that this gentleman was really submitting some excuse duties to the court. As to from wherever he was getting these excuse, excuse duties, excuse duties, I wouldn't be able to ascertain that he was not well to attend court. He wasn't to court well duties. to attend court, right? And I think at the last count, sometime early this year, there was a bench warrant that was issued for his arrest because he had refused to attend court. So we had left that to the police. So today, when your team came to the office, we had a discussion, and they said they would wish to visit one of the institutions, which was closed down. And they I got see. there, and this gentleman was found. Now, uh, that, uh, beyond the, that, there's no raised questions about mm -hmm. the monitoring of the Medical and Dental Council. Because ah. you had closed the facility down, yes. and then this person was able to go back in there and start operating when he had already been arrested and arraigned before court. He wasn't appearing before court, and he had gone back to practice, and you didn't know anything about it no, until the police came up, or we came to your office to talk about no, this. No, the issue is that we would expect that having arrested the person or having caused the person to be arrested, mm -hmm. you know, the legal process takes place, you know, takes its own course. So at the end of the day, we would have to go back, right, sure. to go find out as to whether the institution that was originally closed remained closed. Yes, I do agree that, yes, there were other things that came up. But again, this was an individual for whom uh, an, in, um, an arrest warrant was issued. So we would have expected that at least. Well, you know, that arrest warrant was issued. You know, the police may really look for him. And where would they find him? Either in his home or wherever they might have thought that he would be. How effective is your monitoring? As a council, you know, and I'm concerned about this because the ordinary Ghanaian innocent who is watching us now would not have, all we know is that we're going to the hospital or clinic to get health care from a qualified doctor or any other medical practitioner. We do not suspect anything because we don't know yeah. what is your monitoring to assure the people that we're safe. No, you see, we do a lot of monitoring. And it was through the normal monitoring or our routine monitoring that this individual was initially picked up. Right. Mm -hmm. So, you see, we have the country, you know, divided into several segments. Mm -hmm. So we start with the greater Accra, we combine the eastern region and the Volta region, the central region and the western region, the three northern regions, and then Ashanti region stands on its own, and then we have the Brongahafu region. So we have groups that go there. Unfortunately, you know, if you look at our staff strength, we also have a limitation. But again, I should tell you that, look, the monitoring that we continue to do, that is what really had revealed the issue that there are quite a number of people out there who are practicing Illegal. In fact, there's a suspicion that yeah. these fake doctors there could be more in the system, Doc. Don't you think so? I wouldn't disagree with you. You agree with me? I wouldn't disagree with you. I, I, what you're trying to say is that you agree with me? That I there do, could be more I do. Fake doctors yeah, in yeah the you see, because uh, if Greater Accra should have as many as 12, right, then what happens in uh, remote areas where people really are in need of the health care and we really do not have the established hospitals or clinics in there. So definitely there will be a lot. But again, once we've gotten started, we're going to continue and we try to fish out as many as we can. What do we look out for? I mean, Ghanaians watching us now to ensure that we are in the right and safe hands of people who are certified by your council to give us health care. You see, um, I indicated that a professional is a professional. Mm -hmm. And uh, when you enter into a clinic 
to be attended to by a professional. You see, you need to also watch out for the individual's approach to the examination that is going to be conducted on you, the patient. You need to really look at the way the individual is going to speak to you. You know, once you are able to determine that mm, maybe the way this individual is conducting himself, well, let me devoid of himself or herself because as we speak now, we really haven't accosted any female. So the way the individual is, accosted, uh, is carrying himself up will create a problem. So you get suspicious and you find out from the medical and dental council and the institution. Very confident tricksters. I, mean, I, I agree I... with you on that. But again, you see, in the first place, you enter an environment and you realize that that environment doesn't look like the normal clinic setting. You know, if you look at the video that was shown, yes, right. you know, you realize that this is not an institution that individuals should enter seeking for medical care or health care. Because of cost, people will solve um, these and get away. I but indicated um, mm. earlier that if we're looking at costs, for all you know, the money that are being paid, you know, in such institutions might be higher. And we expect that a number of Ghanaians should be on the National Health Insurance Scheme. And therefore, they could go to the institutions that are accredited. And I'll be surprised if an institution like this is accredited by the National Health Insurance Authority. You should look out for all those. For all these things. Doc, I would want to thank you very much for your time this evening. This, this conversation would, would continue. And, and the sensitization would continue. Me. And I'm, thank I'm you grateful for that you make your time. Thank you. The Registrar yeah. of the Medical and Dental Council, uh, Dr. Eli Kwesi Atikui there uh, uh, talking about this. You should be on the lookout uh, to make sure that you're not in the wrong hands giving you wrong medications. But let's find out how